32-year-old dressage rider and World Cup winner Helen Lange Hannenberg is not only one of the world's best dressage riders, with a silver medal from the team dressage in the London Olympics 2012, a gold medal from the team dressage in the European Championship in Herning 2013. She is also a rider who represents the classical dressage and ideals. Being a student of Klaus Balkenhol and Ingrid Klimke, she has a clear system of how to train horses with gentleness and a positive attitude and how to gymnasticize them for them to become very happy athletes and individuals. Helen is famous for her feather light aids and for the elegance she and her chestnut stallion Damon Hill, or Damien as he is called at home, are expressing. Helen has come to Sweden to share her knowledge and experience in an exclusive clinic focusing on the Ausbildungsgala, how to take a horse from a youngster to Grand Prix. We sat down with Helen for a private chat on her philosophy and thoughts when it comes to dressage and horses. Yeah, it's beginning with the rhythm. First, the young horse has to learn really to trot in, in an equal rhythm to find its balance and um, to find its body somehow and um, to feel well in his body so that everything that um, grows onto this can yeah, build up movements and can end in collection. And then the suppleness is important that the horse really starts to relax without um, being lazy or leaning on the bit but uh, really start to work from behind, but in a relaxed uh, way. Then the contact is important, that the horse finds um, a trustful contact to the rider's hand, that you have really a steady but really soft um, contact between the ho mouth of the horse and the rider's hand. Um, that's really first of the basics, and that's where we start today in the Back on Track Clinic. Um, then it's important to get out of this basics impulsion that uh, the horse starts to work step by step more with the hind legs that uh, the movement or the gait gets even more through the body that the hind legs starts to work the back can really carry the rider's weight and the horse itself and um, that it ends up in the contact in the mouth and that the horse then gets soft and easy in the mouth and can give um, this impulsion and this uh, yeah, starting of expression in the gait back to the hind legs and then the hind legs again can carry more weight. Mm. Then it's important that the horse gets really straight, um, not that I mean, normally young horses start with a good hand and one direction that's not perfect. They are normally a little bit bended to one direction and so the rider is really um, responsible to make the horse straight. That both hands, both directions are equal and when I really reach these aims then I'm able to get collection. Um, that the horse is really carrying weight on the hind legs is able to get more expression, to get into the uphill position, that you have a really uphill contact and um, a trustful contact towards the rider's hand. Um, yeah, and when I reach this, then I can ride good movements. It sounds so simple. Yeah. <laughs> it, just sounds, it just sounds like this. <laughs> it's not always. So just just kind of let's let's look into uh, one of those parts a little bit more specific. So, for example, contact. When you talk about contact, what is it that you know that you really want to feel? I want to feel that the horse begins to work from the hind legs. Even every contact starts with a, with a good and active hind leg. When I have this and the hind leg is really working, then I can get a steady contact. I want to feel a really soft um, contact towards my hand that even if I give the reins, the horse stays in um, the same position with the neck. It's carrying itself and uh, if I want the horse to stretch, I ask a little bit more activity, I give the reins a little bit and then step by step the horse searches the contact even forward downwards. But the same in the other direction, if I want my horse to go more into an uphill position, I sit a little bit more, I use my weight aid, use my leg aid as well and out of this I bring a little bit more um, contact towards my hand 
and that um, makes the horse to go into this uphill position and then I can be soft again and the horse is able to carry weight with the hind legs and with its back um, and to carry itself in this uphill position. Croup does not come up very good and the hind legs are under the center of gravity, good. And you have the feeling you make an own gate out of the PF. Pet him, perfect. And let him stretch, very good. Turn a little bit, offer him to go out and wait until he's ready. Good, exactly like that. That he's getting confidence to go out because he's doing really a good PR for the beginning. And absolutely on the spot. Good, and one more time. Just collect him a little bit, but think of turning. Wait, exactly, yeah, it doesn't matter. Wait, that he feels it comes back into the rhythm. Good, and just turn him. Turn him by going out, good. And pat him and let him stretch, perfect. Not more. It's, it's very easy to kind of talk about it, but actually how do you then do that? How do you create more activity from behind, for example? Yeah, at first I have to use my leg aids um, to really engage the horse from behind. Um, and I always, if I give a half hold, I want the f to feel the first reaction in the hind legs. I don't want to feel that maybe the front legs are escaping a little bit in the front, but the hind legs um, are not working. Um, I really want to feel that I, if I give one aid, the hind legs are reacting directly and at first so um, I get a position that the hind legs working more under the center of gravity the back is able to carry again and then I get the contact and out of this I get more impulsion and more activity more uphill position mm. If we, if we don't talk about straightness, you, you said that you know that a lot of horses are you know having one good and one a little bit less good side. Um, how do you kind of start then the straightness training with a horse? It depends on every horse. Um, I mean, it's it's like the same with us. We have one good side. Uh, we are riding. Most people are riding with the right hand, uh, and some with the left. And it's the same with horses. Um, and it's important. Um, the side to that the horses are like to bend more and um, that is important to make it really straight so maybe to ride in counter flexion and but nevertheless don't work all the all the time on one hand on one direction always change it and um, keep it interesting for the horse and uh, maybe on the little bit stiff side it's important to improve the bending, really to ride smaller circles, serpentines, maybe leg yielding, that the horse really gets onto my aids and reacts on my aids and step by step learns to use its body and gets really the feeling that both sides are equal and it's really impossible to do the same on, on every direction. It's also been a lot of discussions about warming and kind of, you know, how do you really warm a horse to make them, you know, like prepared for work? How do you do? Mm. I find it really important to walk them a lot at the beginning. So our horses are always walking 10, but normally 15 minutes. That really, I mean, they normally come out of the stable. Um, and really that the muscles, uh, the tendons are getting warm. And then I start with some trot and canter work. First, some rounds of trot, just uh, even for the horse to getting warm. but no expressive horse really quiet um, a normal trot don't ask for too much impre uh, expression um, and really let the horse trot how it's trotting naturally uh, doing some transitions between the gates like trot and canter or in the gate that you ask for a little bit more active working canter or a little less active working canter it mustn't be collected directly at the beginning but just to feel that the horse reacts that you already in the warming up feel the horse reacts on really light aids from you and uh, that step by step the horse is getting on your aids. And then for me it's always important to get the horse in a um, stretching position, that the horse searches a contact forward downwards, making a long neck but um, downwards. But it's important that the horse is not leaning on the forehand or on the bit and just pulling downwards. It's important that the hind legs are already working, that I can engage the horse always from behind, that the back is coming up so it's getting into a position and that the horse is able to carry weight. And out of this, the horse should go forward downward and searching the contact, that it's really stretching itself and the back can come up. Mm. And in this position, riding transitions. 
And how do you then develop uh, like a extended or more more like a, a trot with more impression? Um, yeah, I've always find it important after the um, warming up, do a walk break, that the horse can relax again and does not get tired. And if I want to work on an expression, um, I find it important again to do transitions. Um, it depends on every horse. Some horses um, are do it naturally, they have a really good trot and you just ask for a little bit more and they do a nice um, extended trot. But others maybe start to hurry or just to run away or get even quicker in the steps. And with them, again, it's important to engage the hind legs, that they are not just escaping in the front and the hind legs are not working, that they really start the expression from behind. And don't ask too much at the beginning. When you feel the horse just starts to hurry and to run away, collect again. But then the same, don't collect by just slowing down, collect by making the hind legs more active and asking the hind legs to work more. Mm -hmm. That the horse is able to carry the weight on the hind legs and out of this the front legs are able um, to get more expression and um, yeah, to be a little longer moment in the air so um, that you get a bigger and more expressive trot. So how long time would it take to de develop a good trot in a horse? Yeah, again, it really depends on the horse. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I had really many kinds of horses. Yeah, ones that did it directly, others that maybe took half a year, others that um, I had to do it once again and again and again, and then it said, wow, okay, now I know how I should use my body and um, that I really let me fly in the trot. Um, yeah, and others really take years. I have one horse now um, this, that's really doing great movements and has such a good um, in, yeah, intention to work and is always willing. But in the medium trot, it's just running and yeah, it's even not, not daring to do it. Uh, you really feel he tries, but in the last moment, before the moment starts where he really let himself fly, he says, oh no, I can't. And now he really understood it and he's able to carry the weight on the hind legs and um, to stay even collected in the extended trot. So you should never give up and <laughs> always work on it. So let's, let's talk about your trainers a little bit. Can you just kind of, you know, share the key insights that you have learned from your trainers through the times? Yeah, I think um, Ingrid Klimke and Klaus Balkenhol um, are my trainers, or Ingrid Klimke was and Klaus is now. Uh, and I think they really both go the classical way to build up a horse with patience and uh, really yeah, to wait and to give the horse the time that it's need. I mean, one horse is really with a nine-year-old at the level of Grand Prix and able to do it perfectly and other horses need two or three years longer. And they really, I think, have a good feeling for the horse, but for the rider as well. And um, are patient and are able, yeah, even to tell me that I have to wait and that it will come. But at the moment, I can only ask for this because the horse is not um, strong enough yet, and or maybe from the body or from the mind or whatever. And they are really. Um, yeah, looking that I'm have a good warming up. I I'm always on the side of the horse and really be a partner. And I think that's the key. It's really a sport partner, and it's not um, a machine or anything that I can change. And even if you get a new horse, it needs so well such a long time to find together and to really get one with the horse. And uh, you always have to take the time because maybe it. At the, at the beginning it takes some time longer, but at the end uh, it really makes sense. So, so lastly, kind of, if you would be your own coach and you would coach yourself you know, for your future, for kind of, you know, reaching your future goals, what would you say to yourself? Enjoy it, keep on going and work on little things and really feel into every horse and just have fun.